Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. So today I am going to discuss why PhD supervisors or advisors seem so difficult. And this is a problem which plagues many PhD students. Essentially, they consider their PhD guides to have very difficult personalities and they have all kind of problems getting along with them. So let's look at some of the issues which makes the PhD supervisors difficult people. So the number one issue I would say is if you go back to your school days and you think about your teachers, you will find that the primary school teachers were the best or the most liked ones. Then you had the teachers who came to secondary school, then the higher secondary school, class 11, 12 and so on. And as the grades went up, the fact that the teachers were less liked became more and more clear and this was because the level of education increases in abstraction and difficulty and therefore what happens is that most people do like their primary school teachers, their language and literature teachers, but very few people have good experience with their teachers of mathematics and physics. And this is a combination of the fact that some of those subjects makes the people more difficult, more serious and also the fact that the subjects themselves are difficult and abstract and so anybody who deals with those subjects essentially ends up becoming a serious person. So that's the number one issue, the difficulty level of the problem. So the number two issue is the years of time the PhD student typically spends doing research as a lone researcher. And essentially PhD is one of the degrees where you have to work on your own. You have to be an independent researcher. And the result of this is that the social skills are much less developed in comparison to your skills as far as your subject matter is concerned, your research capability is concerned and so on. And therefore there is a disparity between the functioning of the brain and the heart or what I would say is that the PhDs essentially start thinking through most of the problem and therefore what happens is that they lose a lot of their feelings in the process. So years of doing lone research, being a lone ranger essentially makes most PhDs not well versed in social life and therefore you will see this impact on the relative seriousness and difficulty level of most PhD supervisors. The third issue is that of negative feedback. Now most PhDs and especially professors are always getting negative feedback. Whether it is anytime they submit a paper to a journal, they submit a paper to a conference, the reviewer comments are typically negative, they are critical. And the aim of the critical comments is to improve your paper, it's not personal but it does have an impact on the people. Essentially what happens is that people stiffen themselves, they try to make their skin thicker and in the end of this process the people essentially are not significantly impacted by emotional issues. The flip side of that is that they will become more difficult people. So whether it's proposals, whether it's cases where promotion is involved, all these cases involve negative feedback. So essentially if you are a professor dealing with department chairman, dean, president of the university, director, all the time these people are giving you negative feedback. If you are teaching courses you are getting negative feedback and so on. So the toll of this total negative feedback is there as far as PhD supervisors are concerned. Number fourth issue is that very few people spend their time in trying to find problems and essentially research supervisors spend most of their life in trying to find problems. This is not a natural state of being and therefore what happens is that PhD supervisors typically will be people who are very different from normal people because trying to find problems all the time makes them again of very serious demeanor makes them totally concentrated in their head and also somewhat detached from the real world and the society concerned and therefore you will find in many cases that they will be 
rather absent-minded they will be thinking about something else all the time and so on so this is another reason which makes PhD supervisors rather difficult it also leads to their increasing moodiness because a combination of negative feedback and trying to focus on newer research problems makes the mind very moody so the number fifth problem is that I would say there is a big gap between fresh PhD students and a professor essentially when a student comes into the PhD program they have been trained in coursework and this whole art of papers and writing is very new to them now the PhD supervisor has to convert them from this coursework mindset to this paper mindset many people are not well versed in terms of how to do research how to write papers their communication skills are not up to the mark and so on so all this seems very difficult for a PhD supervisor and this person essentially has the responsibility of bringing this PhD student up to his or her level in a period of three to five years and this is a big responsibility and it's quite a difficult task. If you compare it to a school teacher's job you will see that here the task is literally a personal task in the sense that it's not just the sharing of knowledge with the PhD student but the PhD student essentially has to model the supervisor's way of functioning. So it's more like an apprentice to a expert. And therefore, the PhD supervisor has to conduct himself in a manner through which the student is able to learn the art of doing research. And again, this is a process which is not really laid out anywhere. It's something you yourself learn from your PhD supervisor. And when you are a professor, you essentially try to pass this on to a student. So this again is the big issue, which is the big chasm or gap, which is there between fresh PhD students and their supervisor. Now, the number six issue, which is something very interesting, is that PhD supervisors are typically given no training in the art of training students. So if you look at the people who teach in schools and even colleges, they receive some training. So essentially this training tells you how to deal with people. They are trained in psychology, they are training in learning aspects, they are training in what is known as pedagogy. And they essentially spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to train people. So essentially school teachers go through a lot of training. They need certification to teach and so on. But for a PhD, supervisor this person is taken as a PhD student maybe some years of postdoc experience and then thrown into this big swimming pool where he's told okay now you need to figure out how to train PhD students and this is not a difficult or rather this is a very difficult process so this is something which is quite difficult for many students to do and some of them do it well some of them don't do it so well and so on and what happens is that in the academic system, people are typically rewarded for their performance in research, for their publications, for their citations, their H index and so on, and not so much for their teaching or for their research guidance skills. So sometime an exceptional researcher may actually continue to do well in the academic profession, but he or she may not have very good mentoring skills or capability and this person will come across as very weird or difficult to his PhD students but unfortunately that's the way the case is going to be unless we institute some kind of formal training programs for PhD students in the art of mentoring and this is going to be very important because as the generations are changing from baby boomers to Gen Z the people are not going to stay in the PhD program if they do not find a conducive PhD guide or supervisor. They're going to leave the PhD program. They're not going to do postdocs and so on. So it's going to be very important to train PhD students just like we train school teachers in the art of mentoring and bringing up students. So these are some of the issues which essentially make your PhD supervisor a difficult person to deal with. And as you go more into your PhD, you may find that some of these uh, issues get mitigated because you will also become more like your PhD supervisor in your thinking. And uh, this will kind of mitigate your problems, but this problem is always going to be there. But I hope this video will give you some insight which will help you feel some empathy for your PhD supervisor because this person is trying his or her best in most cases and there are absences in their training, there are 
dissonances between their heart and mind which make it very difficult for this person to essentially be like a normal person and if this person was a normal person he would certainly not have done his phd and he would very very certainly not have become a professor after doing years of postdoc and so many other things so this was my take on why phd supervisor tend to be difficult people and in a further video i may talk about how to deal with some of these aspects i will see you then in a new video sometime soon